proof of God. That is the best way I can describe what castor oil is. I'm not a religious person, but the more I learn about castor oil, the more I'm like, there is something, something here. This one oil is so beneficial, has such a breadth of uses. It's been used for thousands of years and it has this level of intelligence where it can treat everything from bone spurs to scar tissue. It's like it has this knowing of how it's needed. Castor oil being reintroduced into my life has been a type of proof of God in its own right. And you'll see what I mean within this video. I don't think we truly understand the extent that castor oil can be used. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the other things I think are just generally missing in the information we have on castor oil that I rounded up. One being the history of castor oil, which is really fascinating. You'll see what I mean by that. The benefits of castor oil and how it can be used. That way you can see how you can apply it in your life if you choose to. How castor oil actually works. This is really important because it gives you a better understanding of just how magical this is. And then I'm going to share with you how I use it. And I am just really excited to see where this goes. My intention is for you to find so much value in this video that you want to share it, watch it multiple times, share your own experience with castor oil in the comments, and of course, subscribe. This is a kind of forward to this video. It's been weeks in the making. Special thanks to my editor, Kate, who has done so much work in this. It's probably a video that I'll be most proud of. In putting this video together, I have since read this book. It's all about castor oil and Dr. Edgar Casey. If you like rabbit holes, be sure to check this out. It's a little bit complicated at times with different medical terms that may go over your head like it went over mine, but well worth it. I do have an Amazon link below. It's like 20 bucks. Use my link. It helps me out a little bit, but by no means is it required. I'm not the only one that thinks it's proof of God. And this book has actually been referred to as the palm of Jesus for a very long time. So with that, I really hope you like this video and we'll get into it starting with the history. In a nutshell, ancient China, ancient Egypt, ancient India, even the ancient Americas, so the Native Americans, have used castor oil in a variety of ways. One of the things of interest to me is that castor oil was said to be one of Cleopatra's, you know, the Egyptian queen, one of her favorite beauty treatments. I believe she would even put it in her eyes as she said it made her eyes whiter. Castor oil was even discovered in a tomb that was dated 5000 BC. So it's been used for a long time in ancient Egypt. Even in the 1800s, you can find a study online where there was a doctor that took record of the sick children that would visit him in the various ways that castor oil helped them. He would basically prescribe them spoonfuls of castor oil each night. And that may even be one of the reasons why so many people have grown up having castor oil each night because it's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, it's antibacterial. It's basically all the aunties. But I found that really incredible. And what was so weird too, as I was up late one night, just looking at these old white papers, it's not even a white paper. It was like a brown paper because this is like an old 1800 scanned study. And as I was looking at it, it was nearly to the day, 140 years ago, which was just kind of bone chilling in a way. Are we in a simulation or is this God in some way? Very interesting. Another area of history with castor oil is with a gentleman named Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey is one of the renowned psychic mediums from the early 1900s. And he would have different visions. He would go into different trances. And ultimately, clients would visit him to be diagnosed because he had this kind of psychic ability to recognize what was wrong with someone. And he would often prescribe what are called castor oil packs. Castor oil packs is basically putting castor oil on a cloth and positioning it over the right rib cage so that it's over your liver and it detoxes the liver and the gallbladder. But Edgar Casey would have these connections with these guides that would tell him what to do. So whether you believe in that or not, I just find it fascinating. And he is credited for castor oil packs. And you'll even hear specialists say, we don't know how this works. We just know that it does. And I have my own experience benefiting from castor oil packs. It really helps me deep bloat. I did it most nights for a month. And I can't say I experienced this compound effect, but then again, who knows how much it benefits me when I was using it daily. Again, just really interesting. The history going back to ancient civilizations, Part of me wonders, like, how did they know that this castor bean 
because that's what it's derived from, would have all these powers. Okay, so that's the history. But how does castor oil work? What are the properties in it that make it so magical? And of course, I got to have a disclaimer here. First of all, sometimes we take natural remedies for granted and underestimate how effective and powerful they are. So please be careful because castor oil is a perfect example of this. Ease your way into using it, especially if you're doing a castor oil pack or putting castor oil on your belly button. You do not want what I would call an unintentional blowout. So take your time. And if you're pregnant, There have been horror stories of women using this to induce labor only to create issues for them and the baby. It's not recommended to use this to induce labor from what I could see. And do not eat castor beans as they are toxic, but the castor oil that is organic, cold press, hexane free, and a glass amber bottle is completely safe. And I will link the one I buy below. Let's get into the benefits, starting with the category of pain. Castor oil can help with joint pain, menstrual pain, cramps, plantar fasciitis, and arthritis, to name a few categories around pain. Castor oil can help either by rubbing the castor oil onto the direct area or creating a bandage soaked with castor oil and then compressing it to the area. Moving along to the category of growth, bone spurs, tumors, fibroids, cysts, bunions, corns, warts. I have this thing on my hip. I'm not going to call it a wart. Can we have a cuter name for that? Maybe like a beauty mark. I don't know. It's, It's not a wart, but it's something that I don't want. And I just smudge castor oil on it. But again, any type of bandage with castor oil is also great for these things that I just listed. Moving on to skin issues, wrinkles. Look at the before and after of these under eye wrinkles. On forums, I've seen people call castor oil natural Botox. I've seen reports that folks' nasolabial folds are reduced significantly. And I'm like, sign me up, baby. Now, if you're somebody with acneic skin like myself, you may be like, I'm not going to put oil on my face. Are you serious? This does not break me out. This is really actually good for acneic skin. So I'm going to show you real quick some of the things I do with castor oil on my face. I will just take castor oil, pour a little bit in my hand. I will rub it as much as I can and I just slather on my face. I do that twice a day. For my scars, because I'm OCD and obsessive about these scars, I'll just slather it on throughout the day. I cannot believe how much they've improved. I could cry with gratitude. I really could. I recently used this oil on my face. People love it. It like got recommended to me on Amazon. I was like, oh, I'll buy it. I'm into oils now. And then I broke out severely. So what I do, one of the things I love to do is make a mask with castor oil. I take Manuka honey. I take the lid of Manuka honey and I make a little dish to mix my mask in here. So I'll put in a little of the Manuka honey and then I'll put in some castor oil. I'll just do like a dollop of castor oil. I rub it together in my little dish and then I goop it up and slather on my face for 15 minutes. It's really great for acne. I think it's really accelerating the healing of my breakout. So how to plug this in here. It reduces pore size, discoloration, it improves skin firmness. It's also great for psoriasis. If I'm dealing with scalp psoriasis, I will smudge a little bit on one of my scalp patches, which is so much fun. Gotta love that scalp psoriasis club. Then one of my favorite uses for it is around scars. I have several scars and I've been rubbing this on them and noticing a big difference. I could cry because this is one of those things I feel like I'm kind of meant to do this video. I have these very noticeable scars on my eyelids from an upper bluff that I'm just straight up ashamed of because I went above and beyond and I'm like, oh, I'm going to consult with a scar expert. And I ended up making my incision scars way worse because apparently the eyelids heal so well from surgery, the less you do, the better. And I did not do less. I did the most. It makes me feel as if that was meant to happen so that I could then discover castor oil and feel so grateful for it that I just want to share it with everyone. Moving on, stretch marks is another favorite use for castor oil. You can actually add castor oil to your lotion, mix it up, rub it on, you know, just as you normally moisturize and get the benefits of castor oil. And castor oil also promotes wound healing. So you can put this on a cut or a wound. I'd be selective about which wounds you're doing, okay? It's really great for that too. So that covers the skin issues. I'm sure I've missed things. but this just gives you at least a big glimpse around what it can do and why I love it. Hair. People love this to grow their eyelashes and brows. They even put it on bald spots. I've been using castor oil on and off for years. I learned
learned about its health benefits back when I was in nutrition school. I recently did an experiment to see if it would help my eyelashes and eyebrows grow. I have to say, I definitely see a difference after using it for about a month and a half. People will use this as a hair mask on their ends. People will actually heat up castor oil as an oil treatment and then put it on their hair. There are all sorts of tutorials online to check out. I personally don't go this route. I don't put it on my hair because I do love the leave-in conditioners I have and feel no need to get into the thick goopiness but it's nice to know it's an option and I probably should try it out at some point. So that covers hair. Getting into one of my favorite categories of benefits are the eyes. Now this is incredible. This oil is so powerful. Users have noticed incredible benefits with their eyes on accident. So please know we're not putting this in our eyes, but just by putting this on the lash line. And of course, be careful. I did come across a girl that said she used castor oil on her lash line and she got an infection. I'm not sure how that happened because I've been slathering castor oil all over my face, all over my lids with my scars, and I've been totally fine, but don't want to discredit her. Just again, be careful. But they put this on their lash line and have noticed reduction in floaters, reduced dry eyes, improved vision. Are you kidding me? I'm sure some people are like, yeah, this is a bunch of of woo woo. Don't knock it till you try it. I'm seriously convinced this is just divine. I myself, this is not a common thing, but I have something called conjunctival pigmentation. It's this brown pigment I have in the whites of my eyes. Given castor oil can help reduce pigmentation in the skin and given it's so helpful for the eyes, even just putting it on the lids, I'm kind of open to the possibility that castor oil can reduce the discoloration in my eyes. Would that not be incredible? I'll keep you posted. If it does help, it'll probably take a long time, but if there's something to report, I will let you know. Dental health. It comes out slowly. People have actually used castor oil to oil pull. So you've probably heard of coconut oil for oil pulling. Well, people will oil pull with castor oil for just two minutes a day and see great improvement in their dental health. Just be sure if you try this out, spit the oil out into the trash, not the sink, because you don't want to create drain buildup, which can happen with oils. It helps digestion, liver cleansing, gallbladder health. I find that for me, it really improves my sleep. I sleep hard, but I was doing it every night for a month. Did I notice a compound effect? I didn't, but Lord knows there was improvement that I'm just not aware of, but it does really help my sleep incredibly. You can also put castor oil into your belly button. This is something people do for ease, as it's said that you have all sorts of nerve endings in your belly button as you had your umbilical cord there, which isn't that another beautiful thing to think about that those of us, especially those of us in the motherless child club, you know, lost our moms. How neat is it that your belly button was like a connection to you and your mom? I think that's so beautiful. So you can actually pour a little bit of castor oil into your belly button and people have found great benefit that way. I've just been on the castor oil pack group, but again, people love putting it in their belly button. Just take it slow because everybody's so different. And some people have noticed like it's too much for them. So be careful. Hemorrhoids, fissures, Lord knows that's no fun, but fortunately castor oil can help with that too. Castor oil packs are also said to help with something called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which a lot of people deal with. So that is a long list of benefits and something tells me there are a lot more benefits. As you can see, I'm even exploring benefits that I don't know for sure are gonna work. Who knows? I'm just somebody open to this. I realize it sounds crazy, but it's interesting to me, okay? I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. So now let's kind of shift gears and talk about what gives castor oil this God factor. And that really comes down to its active component, which is rice and oleic acid. The way to remember that is rice and ole, like the moisturizer, ick, like you get the ick, and then acid. Why do you need to know that word? Well, if you have somebody in your life that's like, what is it this time? Why are you putting this not so great smelling oil on your face? you can then, you know, drop that multi-syllabic word and just get some instant credibility. And then of course, I'm gonna share with you things that you can understand as well that will help further. So rice and oleic acid is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Anti-inflammatory and antibacterial are two factors why it's so great for acne. It's an antioxidant, which is also really powerful. Immune regulation. So components of rice and oleic acid stimulate lymphocyte production, which helps regulate the body's immune defenses against pathogens. Pain relief. The acid can activate pain relieving receptors on nerve endings, such as TRPV1 receptors, and this blocks pain signal transmission. It's a laxative. 
need I say more? Cell signaling. So this is really where the God factor comes in. Researchers believe ricinoleic acid may interact with receptors on cell surfaces to trigger anti-inflammatory pathways or beneficial gene expression inside cells. So I interpret that as like a beneficial domino effect. Like the person that enters a room and everybody feels better, that it has this cell signaling in that way. Could that be why it's able to recognize how to improve something? To recognize how to treat a bone spur and recognize how to treat scar tissue? Is that why it's so powerful and is able to treat a variety of issues? Um, for somebody who is not a chemist, not a doctor, and struggles to understand some of these complicated things, I think that may be, there may be something to that cell signaling that really makes it ultra powerful. There is a lot of research that's been going on for a long time, and I wonder if that will resurface, if more research will go in the area of castor oil and all of the benefits in rice and oleic acid. But of course, the skeptical side of me and the side of me that thinks big pharma has a big motive to keep things like castor oil out of research because part of me has that concern. But that's why if there's any kind of benefit for all the social media, I think that's what this is. It's kind of word of mouth and all the endless resources we have to information. So if you haven't used chat GPT or some type of AI search engine, try it out super easy. And that's certainly helped me organize these complicated concepts. So I hope you love this video. I hope you learn to love castor oil even more. I am just, I feel like it's fate for me to come across castor oil. And I feel like it's this magical potion. However, I can share how I'm using it, how I'm benefiting from it, learning from how others use it and benefit from it. I'm just so grateful that I can even do that on a forum like YouTube. And uh, I'm so grateful that you watched this video. So if you did like it and you like it, it means so much. And if you wanna see future videos of mine, be sure to subscribe and stick around to watch others. Thank you so much.